final days. Hallelujah. Holy, holy, holy Lord. Oh, Ramakia Sotonda. Lord, don't let me be the same. Don't let me be the same. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Welcome, everyone, to Hope this morning. I pray that as this day continues on, your hope will elevate. Amen? Your hope will elevate. Don't be discouraged. Don't be dismayed. Don't let the enemy... As Brother Granberry used to say, lick the sweet off your candy. Don't let it happen. Don't let it happen. Amen. God has something special for you today. Those of you that are in the house, those of you watching online, God has something special for you today. Amen. Remind yourself right now, I am who he says I am. Come on, tell yourself that. I am who you say I am. Hallelujah. 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 God, we magnify you. Glory to your name. Lord Jesus, somebody just worship with me this morning. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. There's no greater way to open a service than to lift up holy hands unto the Lord. Lift up holy hands. Even if you have no words this morning in your voice, it's just silent. Your hands will speak loudly as you give glory and honor to Him. I bring a sacrifice of praise unto you, Lord Jesus, today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We get to do what many want to do and unable to do. Hallelujah. And that is to be free with our vocals, to be free with our expressions. Oh, hallelujah. To bring hallelujah all that is within us unto Him today. Ah, and cry out, Lord Jesus, you are, hallelujah, King of kings and Lord of lords. You are the great I am, majesty, 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 hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, we could just stay here a moment, can't we? Close your eyes again and begin to just pray with praise from your lips. He inhabits the praise of his people, not just song, but praise of His people. Are you His people today? Are you His people today? Hallelujah. Lord God, I thank You today. Oh, hallelujah. I am forgiven. I am cleansed of my unrighteousness. For Lord Jesus, I have given You my life. Confess those things that I have done, Lord God, intentionally or unintentionally. I want to be found pure before You. Lord, those things, Lord God, that you are displeased with, those things I've lacked in this week, I want to be less like my, Lord God, myself in the flesh and more like you in the Spirit today. God, I thank you. I thank you today. Hallelujah, that I'm not the same. Lord, I wasn't the same when I awakened this morning, and I truly won't be the same as, Lord God, your presence fills this place. Anointing, anointing anointing. If you just joined us online, we are praising His name. This may be the only three minutes that you watch us this morning, but as we watch us this morning, you're going to receive this time of just inhabiting the praise of His people. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. I pray for a brokenness today in each of us. I pray, hallelujah, that tears cannot be withheld. I pray, Lord God, that today we cannot, Lord, be inhibited by our cluttered minds and by, Lord God, our anxiousness of spirit and heart. Oh, we are free today in your name. Free today, hallelujah, to glorify you. In your name, Lord, we lift you up. If you need a touch in your body today, why not now? Why wait till a certain time? And you're right now, now place your hand upon that area of your body that you need a touch, a healing. Hallelujah. Gifts of healing are already at work in this place. Gifts of healing are working in this place right now. Be healed. Hallelujah. Be healed in the name of Jesus by the blood of the Lamb. Be healed. Do you believe today? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, release, Lord Jesus, into their body strength and peace. 
Oh, be glorified. Oh, hallelujah. As we are resurrected in body and in mind and in strength today. Oh, we thank you, Lord God. We praise you, Lord Jesus. We praise you, Lord Jesus. We praise you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know that you can have this moment every day of your life. You can awaken in the morning and you can give him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This moment of time and praise. Oh, glory to your name. Glory to your name. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord God. Oh, I have days I lose the fight. I try my best, but just don't get it. moments right before my eyes Somebody with a hurt that I could have held Somebody with a hand that I could have held But I just can't see past myself Lord help me be little more like mercy little more like grace little more like praise this morning and I want you to move around this place and welcome someone into the house of the Lord that you have yet to greet can you do that Pastor Belinda would you come amen amen
Good morning, Hope Church. Amen, amen. As you're finding your way back to your seats, we have just a few announcements, some upcoming events and opportunities for uh, us to serve, opportunities for us to um, search the Lord's plans and his will and his purposes for us, all kinds of things that we uh, have coming up. But this coming Saturday is our first opportunity, and that is to serve at the Lavernia Christian Food Pantry. So right across the street, it will be our Saturday to serve. If you're available, so we usually meet right about 8.30, a little bit prior to, but you can sign up in the lobby um, and let us know if you're going to be able to make it. We've got some other things going on in the lobby, too, regarding the food pantry. That's all coming up for Thanksgiving and for Christmas, some things that we need for the boxes that we're going to be distributing to the families in the area. So you can kind of take a look at that and see what we're what we're gathering up, how many, and by when we need that. And then, of course, for Christmas, too, we bless the kids in the community. And by the way we've been doing it the last few years has been with, a, uh, with gift cards to Walmart, so $25 gift cards to Walmart. So, again, you can take a look at that and um, sign up. Let me know if you'll be able to be a part of serving on those extra days in our community for Thanksgiving and Christmas. And then you can see what we have that we're um, collecting for those holidays as well. Then we have some sweat equity coming up. So on the 29th, we have our work day. And so this will be our first opportunity to serve over at the property next door. And Stuart is here. Stuart's here with us too. Uh, so we look forward to having Stuart with us. I think a, a couple of dudes are coming as well with some really big pieces of equipment. I, yeah, like shovels. No, I'm just kidding. No, <laughs> much bigger than that. <laughs> much bigger than that. But uh, so we're looking for men, women to be a part of that. Also, our kiddos that are under 12 are going to be having a Christmas practice, the Christmas play practice, yeah. and some fun during that time. So that's cool. Um, they can be a part of that. And then uh, anybody 12 and older, we welcome to come be a part of our work day. So let us know. We're going to have breakfast tacos and hamburgers. Sure. Oh, <laughs> we're going to have food. We're going to have food available, so let us know if you're coming. An official so we'll sure. executive decision. No, <laughs> maybe not. Maybe it could be something else. I'm not sure. <laughs> Five-layer lasagna. I don't know. That sounds a little rich for a, for a work day, right? Anyway, so sign up for that, too, if you want to be a part of that. And then, so now I talk about five layers lasagna, and I go right into fasting. Nice. That's, that's well played there. Feast and fast. So then in November, the 1st through the 21st, we're going to have an intermittent, uh, a time of fasting, and we're going to do it in an intermittent fast kind of way. So you commit to whatever three to five hours that you're going to fast, not in the middle of the night. Where's Pastor Stephanie? Not in the middle of the night. That's <laughs> I'm teasing her. We were joking about that earlier this week. So, uh, but yes, so if you'll be a part of that, let us know as well. That'll go through right before Thanksgiving. Don't get all stressed out. We'll have... We'll, we'll feast again. So I guess we feast, and then we fast, and then we feast again. So, And then as just a reminder to return your tithes and offerings back to the Lord this morning, lots of different ways that you can do that, digital ways, physical ways, checks, cash, whatnot. Um, we do have a kiosk 2.0 in the lobby. If you have any questions about that, let me know. But anyway, it's, it'll work. It's like just another little swipe digital thingy. Nothing too exciting there. But if you uh, will give back your tithes and offerings that way, you're welcome to do so. And then, of course, today is the 16th. So then our seed faith that goes toward capital improvement and expansion is $16. And I got a little fuzzy here. So anyway. You gotta Praise God. Stand to your feet one more time. I know some of you are wondering, why do we always have to stand when we worship? Well, I see you quite often from this perspective. And some of you get real comfortable when you sit. I don't want you to go to sleep this morning, okay? I want you to know that God is in the room. I said God is in the room. God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, I believe He is present. And He has something special. And we're just going to give Him a few moments of just, just ex exaltation, just exalting Him, lifting Him up. And this is more for preparation of your heart. Okay, come on. You're preparing yourself to receive today. This is not just this is not just a time for you to 
just skip out on some honeydew list and some schedule assignments at home and and update your rest. Come on, we're here today. We're sacrificing. I know you are physically, but spiritually, amen. You're going to be so full when you leave this place. But we stand in honor. We stand in praise. We glorify Him. I can't tell you and express to you how heavy of a feeling I feel. I sense right now in this place. And it's a good feeling. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, you are Messiah. He became sin who knew no sin that we might become his righteousness. Humbled himself and carried the cross. Love so amazing. Love so amazing. Jesus Messiah.
you, Jesus. You are mighty in this place. Mighty in your name, Jesus. Do you believe this this morning that he is good? He is good. And here's so what. This is so amazing. This is incredible. He knew what you needed before you walked into the house. I believe he's already prepared that through the anointed word of our guest today as he comes to speak. I believe that he's already prepared and he knows as we are singing and we are engaging an invitation for him to do something great and mighty in us. If you need God to do something that is beyond even the fathom of thought that can be accomplished in your own will, supernaturally is what you would call it. Someone might even call it a miracle. I want you today, I want you just to, you can do it right where you're at, but I always intend to invite you to come and stand even in the altars. As we sing this song, it is a song, it is a prayer, it is a, it is back to Him to recognize that in His presence, miracles happen. That He might receive all the glory, that He might receive all the honor, that when others see what could not be done by man, that they would see that there is a God and that He is available. He is available to all who call upon Him because of what Jesus did. He gave us access. And we're so thankful for that today. But this is a place today, I believe, that you can receive a miracle. Amen. 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 And you don't have to do something crazy to receive. You just got to believe. You got to believe. This is a house of worship. This is a place of praise. Where every demon trembles. Where we proclaim your
Thank you. In your name we pray. In your name we pray. Jesus. 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 No, oh, Jesus. We love you, Lord Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Yando. He had Lord, you said we have not because we ask not. So, Lord, before we step into hearing of the Word of God today, Lord, I stand and lead this body, those who believe in this room, and we ask of you that great need, which you already are aware of. You already know. I believe you've already prepared to give the answer, to give the response to give what is needed that you receive all the glory but Lord I ask of you today because that's what the scripture says to knock seek and ask and I ask that you might receive glory in the answer I receive today Jesus receive all the glory Jesus Receive all, all the glory. If you receive this morning by faith, you ask of Him. And by faith, because many of you know that the answer, the response, what you were asking for may not be able to be seen even right now. I want you to begin to think Him. Just begin to give Him some thanksgiving right now for hearing you. He hears you when you pray. He hears you when you sincerely call upon you, Him and pray His will according to John, 1 John chapter 5, verse 14 and 15. So just thank Him right now. Raise your voice. Let me hear it. Let everyone in the room hear it. Let yourself hear it. Thanksgiving be to God right now. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you. We glorify you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Lord God, hallelujah. By faith, I receive. By faith, I say thank you, knowing, Lord God, that you've heard. Knowing, Lord, that you, hallelujah, hallelujah, are able to do all things. 
And I thank you, Lord Jesus. And Lord, hallelujah, I give you praise for this. I thank you, Lord God. Yes, Lord Jesus. Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. I just, again, give you the privilege. Thank you. Amen. For those who so faithfully just support the kingdom work here at Hope, so faithfully give, tied in above and beyond. Again, I celebrate what God has done in this church and what he's continuing to do. I believe that we are we have walked through the door of an extreme blessing of God. Uh, only he will know the final, but he has he has blessed and I give him thanksgiving. I want him to receive the glory. Only he could have. I prayed it earlier. I do again reiterate knowing that only he can. Thank you so much. We are we want you, if you would, to celebrate our children as they go to children's church. Uh, they go to nursery. They go to pre-K. Those volunteers so faithfully going and serving, thank you for doing that. We're praying that you're anointed, for this is not a time of babysitting. This is a time that they're engaging and studying of God's Word at a level that some of you, you're like, I, I, I need that too. <laughs> and you can do that if you would volunteer in children's church. You can hear it broke down. Thank you, team. Thank you, team. Amen, amen. 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 You could have a seat. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to turn this over quickly to Brother Johnny Cochelle, who's here. He's always faithful this time of year to come and to impart into the lives of young lives of Chi Alpha and those that are serving. But he blesses our socks off. I have to double check and see if I even wore socks today to make sure, make it easy. But he, if you've not ever heard the word of God spoken through this man, you are in for a treat today. And this is what I've been praying. And I want you to know, because I don't want you to be shocked, that you are transformed in your way of thinking. To think as the Lord thinks and as he wants us and needs us to think during this time. Praise God. Come, Brother Koshel. Come and speak. What's that, babe? You might as well say it because I'm not getting the code. Oh, he's there. Do you want this? Where you want this? Down here? That's it. Well, I, I lay awake. I thank you for the invitation, Pastor Bobby, to come to Lavernia again. Uh, I lay awake half the night uh, preaching about 20 sermons. And then I go crazy trying to figure out, even to the point of coming up here, what I should say in the time I'm given. And I want to get out by 1130 so you don't say there's a missionary coming. I'm never going back because they don't know when to Oh, there's a time. That's good. I like that. All right, let me, uh, my name is John. I'm from the state of Wisconsin. Uh, I was raised in the Assembly of God Church, but I was just, uh, 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 yeah, a, a Pentecostal uh, cultural Christian. In other words, that's the church I went to. Uh, you could be that with any kind of church. Uh, I, I, God was handy if I needed him. But I was God. So then you're not a Christian. Uh, you're the God. And that's the thing that we all have to deal with every day of our life, with the decisions we make. Who's God? That's uh, what we, to turn and look to Jesus and adore him and worship him, not, not just 90 minutes on Sunday morning, but every minute of every day, and to make him Lord, and that was the issue, and of course, for me, it was, could I trust this God, and some of you think about that, too, we all have disappointments, because we live on this earth, and it's called life, it's also spiritual darkness and forces that are at work, but Jesus conquered all of that. When he blasted out of the tomb, and the first being 
to scream a primeval scream was Satan because he knew he had just had his teeth and his fangs pulled out of his body. And he no longer had power unless you opened the door a crack to give him power. And then you have to be reminded of his strategy, and that is he's, he tells half the truth. He's a liar. He even tried with Jesus to misquote scripture. And Jesus started his ministry after that 40 days of fasting that Dallas Willard, a wonderful author, would say is really feasting. Fasting is feasting. And you should read about that because you're all worried that you're going to get hungry. But there's many forms of fasting that they should take. And I'm a lousy faster. Hello. So welcome, gang. And I need to be better at that kind of discipline. Because there's discipline involved in serving God or discipline just to get out of bed and go to work, let alone school when you're a kid. Okay, I got lots to talk about, and uh, let me get started. I read a book that Daniel Young, who serves Chi Alpha in the Valley, uh, and I was going to bed at his place, and uh, he said, uh, you ever read the book Preaching by Tim Keller? I said, what a boring title. I said, no, I bought every book from Tim Keller, who preaches uh, in New York City at Church of the Redeemer, and he's an incredible Presbyterian spirit-filled expositor of the word, and uh, like Madonna's songwriter sits in the crowd, and whoever. He, he names all kinds of famous people, because he's got the courage, after the sermon, to those Manhattan people in New York City to say, stick around for Q&A. You can ask me anything. Whoa. And out of that has come all kinds of books because he is, he is engaging the world and not, it's just not a, a one-way communication. So it's amazing. Now he's fighting pancreatic cancer, and uh, we'll see. So I, I, uh, Daniel Young said, take the book with you to bed, and you'll buy it in the morning. He's right. I'm going to read from it. Preaching, colon, that's the two dots, communicating faith in an age of skepticism. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's where we're at, more and more in this country. Communicating faith in an age of skepticism and toxic individualism, I would add that, which is destroying our country. And Christ is the only hope for humanity on this entire earth. Your hope, and I hope that you're a light that shares that hope and lives that hope in a Christ-like manner, filled with the Spirit of God, with that anchor for all of those wonderful fruits of the Spirit being love, loving people that you normally wouldn't love, being filled with joy, being filled with peace and righteousness. and honor. You know the scripture better than I know it. Let me just uh, read a little. I read this often, and it just takes me into worship. Because he said, too many of you are preachers, but you don't really have much to say about Christ. And that hit me, and I started to think about it. So let me read, because it's better than I can try to say it to you. So goodbye eye contact. I'm going to go read for my page. All, preach Christ in every major figure of the Bible. All the major figures and leaders of the scriptures point us to Christ, the ultimate leader who calls out and forms a people for God. So all the anointed leaders in the Bible, every prophet, priest, king, and judge who brings about salvation or deliverance or redemption, redemption of any kind or level are pointers to Christ in their strengths and even in their flaws. Even their flaws show that God works by grace and uses what the world sees as marginal and weak. That includes social and moral outsiders. This is, this I'm, I, I'm doing reading. So it's, you talk simpler when you talk. 
So I'm, excuse me for reading to you. Please excuse me. But I, 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 you're going you're gonna to be gripped by this. So the social and moral outsiders whom God uses are Rahab, right? Ruth, Tamar, even Bathsheba. And they're all in the genealogy in Matthew chapter 1. Especially those in the line of the promised seed point to him. So he is a fulfillment of the history of the judges who show that God can save not only by many, Osniel, or by few, Gideon, but also by one, Samson. This is good writing. He's done some thinking and some research, and I get to buy it pretty cheap for all the hard work he's done. So Jesus is a judge, all the judges point to, since he truly administers justice. The prophet, all the prophets point to, since he really shows us the truth. The priest, all the priests point to, since he truly brings us to God and the king of kings. How do you apply Jesus to the characters of the Bible? The first time I read this, I started to cry. I don't know how many times I've read this, what I'm going to read to you right now. And it's important enough for me to share it with you here at Lavernia. Because probably not many of you own the book Preaching by Tim Keller. Spirit of God, I pray that you'll speak to these words because they're all going to lift you up. Like Pastor Bobby has led us to the throne today. And we've all had the opportunity to come and kneel at the footstool of God this morning and worship him. You've had that opportunity here. And what a privilege to be in God's house. I so wish it was packed full. And I am going to continue to pray that despite all the opportunities to attend the house of God in Lavernia, that it still leaves plenty of room for people that aren't in church today. Jesus is the true and better Adam who passed the test in the garden, which, of course, Adam didn't, and whose obedience is given to us, 1 Corinthians 15. Jesus is the true and better Abel, who, though innocently slain, has blood that cries out for our acquittal and not our condemnation. Jesus removed the sting of sin and death by his sacrifice. Jesus is a true and better Abraham who answered the call to God to leave the comfortable and familiar and go out into the void, quote, not knowing whither he went, quote, about Abraham, to create a new people of God. Are you getting that? The true and better Adam, the true and better Abel, the true and better Abraham. He's the true and better Isaac who was not just offered up by his father on the mount, but was truly sacrificed for us all. God said to Abraham, Now I know you love me because you didn't withhold your son, your only son, whom you love from me. Now we can say to God, Now we know that you love us because you did not withhold your son, your only son, whom you love from us. You're getting the pattern of what's going on here? And he goes on and on on pages here, saying Jesus is the true and better. Let me read a couple more. Jesus is a true and better Jacob who wrestled with God and took the blow of justice we deserve so that we, like Jacob, receive only the wounds of grace to wake us up and discipline us. Jesus is a true and better Joseph who at the right hand of the king forgives those who betrayed and sold him. Remember Joseph being betrayed and sold and uses his new power to save him. Jesus is the true and better Moses who stands in the gap between the people and the Lord and who mediates a new covenant. I could go on and on and on. Uh, what he uh, has about the story of Jesus in the boat, where the di disciple said, don't you love us? Ah, that's worth the price of the book. Sorry, going to have to get the book. I'm not going to read it to you. <laughs> Do you hunger for God that way?
you owe your very existence to God's mercy and grace. I can say that with my five bypasses. I can say that because he healed me, as I've told you every time I come from polio in the 50s when I was paralyzed. I can see that in my precious daughter who God put an organ in her body that was removed. And she couldn't eat or drink for three years as a teenager and had a Hickman shunt to her heart to stay alive. I'm sitting here. And I know this is online. My daughter is an assistant, uh, is an area director with her husband. She's not the wife of the area director. She's an area director in Central Asia and lives in Central Asia. So all I'll say because we're going public. About 160 people that work with them. My daughter's about 43 years of age. This isn't the first time, and I won't say where, but right now, right now, she flew yesterday to the city in the United States to be with one of the people that I met last summer at School of Missions for Missionary Candidates with our mission, where people are interviewed and, uh, and, and start being oriented and trained towards becoming a, uh, a, a, an ambassador for Christ somewhere in the world. And this uh, young lady was part of that. And Sarah's with her right now in her city. Because last summer, just before she came to the orientation week, she learned she had stage four breast cancer. And she's 30. Stage four. So Sarah flew yesterday to be with her now. I don't imagine she has long on this earth. She's 30. Do you see the responsibility that you bear with the gift of life? Take it seriously. I'm going to read from you something else. I read this all the time. It's a kind of a devotional book. It's got 31 chapters, so I'm figuring out. I think this is a monthly devotional. 31 chapters. Uh, you all know the author, I think. It's Andrew Murray. And you all know the title, Abiding. If you don't own the book, you can afford it. It's about two stops at Starbucks. It'll last you longer. Abiding by Andrew Murray. I read it over and over and over again. I, it, I outline it. I, I, I type it out by hand. It's, it's right up here. I'm going to read to you from chapter 28. I think I'm in chapter 28. And listen to this. When a graft is united with the stock, the graft, okay, grafting something on to a tree, a vine, on which it is to grow, we know that it must be kept fixed. It must abide in the place where the stock has been cut and wounded to make an opening to receive the graft. No graft is possible without wounding, laying bare, and opening up the inner life of the tree to receive the foreign branch. Is it coming through? It is only through such wounding that access can be obtained to the fellowship of the sap that's in the tree or the vine or the plant and the growth and life of the stronger stem. This reality holds true for the relationship between Jesus and you and I. 
Only when we are united together in the likeness of his death will we also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Coming through. Partakers of the life and the power that are in him. Only when we're united in the likeness of his death. So there is a fellowship, precious friends, between Christ's sufferings and your sufferings. His experiences must become yours. And the disposition that he showed in choosing and bearing the cross must be yours. If I had to do an outline of discipleship, and that was the command of God in every gospel, go and make disciples. And Dallas Willard would say, the people that are in discipleship are the people that are Christian. That's pretty radical. That's what this Southern Baptist man would say who is now in heaven because of pancreatic cancer who is the chairman of the Department of Philosophy at the University of Southern California, which used to be a Methodist school. And that's pretty radical. And that's what he says about his own denomination. Otherwise, the divorce rate should not be the same as the secular world in the church. And, 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 and. I was raised in this church. I knew all the songs by heart. I knew when to raise, shut my eyes, raise my hands. I went to church. We lived in church back in those days. Sunday morning, Sunday night, Tuesday night, Thursday night. Visitation Monday night, Saturday night prayer meeting. Uh, fellowship meetings, we used to have fellowship meetings. CA rallies. We were, uh, high point was church camp. Some of you know what I'm talking about. Some of you say, what are you talking about? I lived in church. My folks had the key to the church. I didn't, I just got tired of being at church all the time as a kid. And Sunday night was 745, so in Wisconsin you can get all your chores done, milking the cows. The church started kind of later. I'm waiting all afternoon, couldn't do a single thing. I've been to movie house one time to see Corey Ten Boom, the hiding place. But that didn't make me a Christian. I had to realize I needed a Savior. And that I was a sinner. And if there's anybody here that has not yet made that decision, today's your day. It's the most important decision you'll ever make in your entire life. Twenty six minutes to go. There's a fellowship between Christ's sufferings and your sufferings. His experiences must become yours. The disposition he showed in choosing and bearing the cross must be yours. Like him, you will have to give full assent to the righteous judgment and curse of a holy God against sin. Like him, you have to consent to yield your life, the old nature full of sin and its curse to death, and through it to pass to the new life. Like him, you'll experience that it's only through the self-sacrifice of Gethsemane and Calvary that the path to the joy and fruit-bearing of the resurrection life can be found. You bow. You kneel. Your heart is touched. Your whole very atom of your entire being is impacted by the God that created you. In his image, that is a powerful statement to a person of Islamic background. And they, some of them have come to become followers of the true and living and only God by learning that they have been made in his image. You have discovered a God. The best way I can put grace, here's, here's my image. What's your image? What, what image has the Holy Spirit given you? You know my image of the grace of God is? Man, oh man, I'm Pulled over by the Texas Highway Patrol. I've been speeding. Oh, brother, he pulls out. The lights come on. It's never happened to me yet. And the lights come on, and your heart's going, oh, man. Some of you know what I'm talking about. And you, and you pull over, 
and uh, you keep your hands on the top of the steering wheel. You don't move an inch. I've been told that. And uh, he gets out of his car, but a car pulls in behind a state patrol car. And this person gets out of their car. And as the patrolman comes up to you to start the process of arresting you and giving you a ticket, this other person on the car behind the police car comes up. And he, and, he, and he comes up to the window where the patrolman is, and you're looking at him with big eyes, I hope, and a little guilt. And, 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 and the man says, excuse me, sir, I'll take that ticket. He looks in at you and says, ticket's on me. You're okay. That's grace. That's God. That's mercy that you did not deserve. And somebody else is going to take, take, t take the punishment. That, that's my best. You can do something better. But I hope you have in your mind some kind of image of what undeserved favor is like. And if you haven't cried over that and wept, then I'm going to pray that you start doing that. Because years ago, I asked God, for the gift of tears. You will say, oh, that's not macho. Well, probably not. But that's God who wept over Jerusalem and weeps over you. And I've asked God to give me a heart like his. I'm talking to you. Don't push back. I'm talking to you. That's not a weakness to weep. Do it in the privacy of your home. Do it in a quiet walk out on the prairie or whatever you call your land here in Texas. Go out on the land. Go to your deer stand. Go sit there on a bench and have some solitude with the device off. And you're just with God. And see if God doesn't come and speak to you. And you may experience God. Please. 24 hours in a day, seven days in a week. You don't have time for this? Well, what do you have time for? What, what occupies your mind the most? Set your heart and your mind on Christ Jesus, who's seated at the right hand of the Father. And that's what we're to do. That cuts way down my, my watching news. That cuts way down my listening to this theory or that theory or that idea or this idea. You all know what I'm talking about. That causes me to do what I'm doing as I'm sitting here. And I'm worshiping. I'm here. I'm with God. I am worshiping God in spirit and in truth. And God is taking me all over the world that you've allowed me to see. And last night, 550 students who were at Breakaway in San Antonio at Gateway Church. The energy there was incredible. Huh, Stuart? Incredible. Before the meeting, we had baptisms. It just didn't quit. And every time somebody was uh, baptized in a stock tank, I was baptized in a lake in Wisconsin where they're water skiing, and people are looking at, what's that guy doing out there in the water with all his clothes on? Okay? <laughs> we do stock tanks in Texas, or we do baptismals. This should be a family event. It's really cool to do it at conferences because they explode in cheers as you come out of the water. And my friends, he put that clock down. <laughs> Thank you. All right. My friends, my wife said this morning on a message as I was headed to Lavernia, uh, Dick Brogdon just wrote me and sent me a picture that somebody took of me at the baptismal. And you were there with your hands in the air praying. And somebody took a picture across the corner. I prayed that every single one of those people, as they come out of the water, would start speaking in tongues. Every single person. And I'm going to continue to pray. 
If you haven't been baptized in the Holy Spirit, God has gifts for you that will empower you, that will give you comfort, that will give you a greater view of God, which should be your lifetime goal, is how can I know God better today? His purity, his holiness, his power, and his love for John and for you. Every day. So I, I wouldn't get, I wouldn't leave the house. I put on clothes. You do too. I, 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 I get breakfast about every other day. I shower. It, it, but I wouldn't leave the house without my being with God. Praying for Russia today. I always talking about Operation World here. I praying uh, through the daily uh, uh, prayer and scripture reading from the Anglican Church. The Word of God, Old Testament, New Testament, is 21 minutes long. I do that every morning. And I listen to the choir sing the songs. And then I read the Word of God. I'm in 2 Samuel right now. I try to read the Bible through one and a half times a year. But I know a bunch of people that are reading it through right now in 90 days. I know people that read the whole Bible through in two weeks. Why don't you just try sometime reading Philippians or Ephesians or one of these letters for 30 days? And I think it would take you about 15 minutes to read the four chapters of these letters. It's a letter written out loud to the church. Try it. Just try it. See how it will enrich your life. So I'm sitting there. Back to my train of thought. My wife would be praying for me right now. John, stay on the path. So they're coming out of the water. And I'm saying, in the name of the Lord, be baptized in the Holy Spirit. If you've experienced that, you know what I'm talking about. For the rest of you, you don't know what I'm talking about. And I feel sorry for you. And I, I got baptized in the Holy Spirit. When I said to the pastor at Christmas time in cold Wisconsin, it's holiday. I'm a high school junior or senior. And I said to the pastor at a Sunday night meeting before it started, can I have the keys to the church? And he said, pardon me? I said, can I have the keys to the church? He said, what for? I said, I am, you're all going to go home tonight, and I'm staying here till I get baptized in the Holy Spirit. I'm going to stay here in the church, and I'm not leaving. If it takes a whole Christmas vacation, I'm staying here until I'm baptized in the Spirit. Merit badge? Christian Eagle Scout? No. Hunger for God. Gift from God to have hunger for God. And, of course, it wasn't long in the altar time. And people are hollering and screaming and holding my arms and shaking me, and I thought, in my mind, get away from me. <laughs> so, I, <laughs> so I just lay down on the floor to just get away from the people. And, and, and God marvelously baptized me in the Holy Spirit. Incredible. And then time stands still. You don't know how long time takes. And finally I got up and I went to the cloakroom. Uh, and I put on my coat and my Stocking cap and my mittens, gloves are too cold. You got to wear mittens in Wisconsin where your hands stick together. And I turned to somebody, Pastor Bobby, and I said, Isn't Jesus wonderful? He come out in another language. <laughs> I was so embarrassed, I just took off out of the church. I hadn't gotten back yet to England. I'd like to hear your story. I'm sitting here, and I'm saying to those young people, run the race. Run the race. I'm saying to you, run the race. Take the whole world, but give me Jesus, we used to sing. No turning back, no turning back. I'm sitting here with the image from my dear friend David Leatherberry, who spent 40 years in Afghanistan. Afghanistan. Through all the Russian revolutions and wars, and then the U.S. coming in. The colleagues that were, throats were 
slit from ear to ear. The time their car went over a cliff in the Afghan mountains and an angel picked up that car and put it back on the road. I do not hesitate believing that for a second. And story after story. David and Julie Leatherberry are now, ooh, they're uh, 85. So I said to my friend Dick, uh, where could I send some money in the Middle East? And I've been giving money to Syrian and Iraqi refugees. That's my money, which is really God's money. So it's not a big problem for me to give God's money as his steward. Try it more and more and watch the correlation between giving and receiving. It's a law of God. And my friend said, you know, I got uh, some friends named the Leatherberry. Oh, I know them. I've been supporting them for 40 years every month. I started supporting missionaries at age 19, never dreaming or planning that I'd ever be one of them. I never, I never had that expectation or desire. But I've been supporting monthly for our missionaries for over 60 years. And he said, there was the Aldeses. Oh, yeah, I know that name because I follow BBC News and I get the real news. And they're an offshoot in Islam in a certain corner towards Iran in Iraq. You could look it up there. You could look up that and there's all kinds of articles because a few years ago when ISIS was uh, doing a genocide move and controlled northern Iraq, including Mosul, et cetera, et cetera, and uh, the Taliban are choir boys compared to ISIS. Are you reading the news? Are you aware of these things? Are you, are you tuned in to these end times that we live in? And so the, I, the ISIS folks come into this area. They don't like these people, even though they're, Mus they're part of their Muslim family. And they, and they just uh, herded the guys to pits and but, uh, got them down in bulldozed pits and just slaughtered them. I can't imagine. Slaughtered them. Raped the children. Mothers. Daughters. I didn't want to think about it. So in Kirkirk, the Kurdistan part of Iraq, Kurdish people have a nation with no nation. And that's Iraq, Syria, and Turkey. Kurdish people. And we have an Assembly of God church in that city that has Iranian services and Arabic, etc. cetera. And, and David and Julie are in their middle 80s. And they're out there serving. And they have a photo, first time ever, because of security, they never showed photos in Afghanistan. And they had a photo of these, and I could send you the newsletter. And there's nine women in this picture, and they've given them sewing machines. And, and they're, teaching them their, they're teaching them a trade so they can earn money. Because eight of the nine are widows. Can you imagine the trauma? Can you imagine the trauma? Can you imagine the hatred? Can you imagine how deep the wounds are, my friend? That's where my mind is. That's where my heart is. That's where my money is. His money. That's where my energy is. It's not on me and if the Cowboys win or lose. It's on people made in the image of God that have had just a life of suffering. Now, I don't even know what it means to take up a cross and follow him. Because we live in this country. But it's standard for much of the world. If you read The Insanity of God and Live Dead, I just was rereading it again the other day in Morgantown, West Virginia. And he said, and, 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 and Nick Ripken, who just spoke to the Chi Alpha Group and Baptist in Arlington, Texas, according to Oriota's newsletter, the man that wrote this book, The Insanity of God. And remember, Dimitri took uh, Nick over to the window and said, see? 
Remember, remember if you've read the book, see, the sun comes up every day. Do you tell the people, your kids that the sun's going to come up today? No, you don't do that because it just comes up. He said, so no, no, we haven't written books about suffering. Suffering is our life. We don't have to remind ourselves the sun's going to come up each day. Remember reading that? Oh. Thanks for coming to church today. Thanks for raising your hands and surrender and worship. That's so little that we do. Thanks for helping buy the property next door. After the honeymoon period of however you use it, then work sets in. Are you going to stick with it? Thanks for reaching out. Thanks for daring to say every morning, Lord, use me today. I dare you to say that. If you do that, he's going to use you. So don't say it if you don't mean it. Lord, give me an opportunity today to talk about you in a way that's so natural and easy. It's just like conversation. Help me to forgive and live. Dallas Willard says, I have a discipline. Are you ready for this one? I get in the longest checkout line at the grocery store. So I can pray more. I try to get in a line if I'm in somewhere, but I'm not very much anywhere at much time. My whole life. You, people say, well, where do you live? I say, oh, Lavernia. <laughs> Yesterday, Morgantown, West Virginia. <laughs> Tuesday, Springfield, Missouri. Friday, Heidelberg, Germany. True. <laughs> I, I'm on this earth, but I'm not part of this earth. Through him I can partake of the full power of his death to sin and the new life of victory to which it is but the gateway. My part is simply to yield myself to him in undivided surrender with much prayer and strong desire, asking to be admitted into the ever closer fellowship and conformity of his death by the power of the spirit in which he died that death. When I stand in his place, which is still always mine, I'm still what I was by nature, the cursed one who deserves to die. But since I am united to him, brothers and sisters, I share his blessing and receive his life. When he came to be the one with me, he could not avoid the cross, for the curse always points to the cross as its end and fruit. And when I seek to be one with him, I can't avoid the cross either, for life and deliverance are to be found only in the cross. So he took my cross for his own, and I must take his cross as my own. I must be crucified with him. It is as I abide daily, deeply, in Jesus the crucified. You had the privilege to hear a great man of God named Dick Brogdon in this church. That's his theme. And he lives it. I don't know if you get his newsletter or not. Uh, I won't mention the country that he's mentioning here because we're online. But I, I can tell you that the church is being built in the country that he lives in. In the holiest cities of that country and all through that country. In amazing ways. But I can also see the pictures of a previous newsletter where he has obscured the face as this man's being baptized. And underneath the picture, it says, this man's wife took all the children and has left him because he's become a follower of Christ. I cannot imagine. Now, let's grab quick that uh, slideshow. Can we turn on the slideshow? Let's go down about five slides. I'm watching the time. Go down about five to a diagram with five boxes in it. There you go. Ah. 
I don't think you can read that. Can you guys read that? No, I'll, I'll read it to you. I'll get it up in my thing. I'm going to read it to you. Well, you can read the top. And I want you to get this, and then I'm through. It's every day making the right decisions. Here's where it starts. The mind. Where's your mind? What do you think about the most? What do you think about the most? What do you do with your mind through the day? What are you thinking about? I won't start that or I'll get in all kinds of trouble. So I'll just leave that. But you think about it. The next, your thoughts. How about your thoughts? Out of your mind and your thoughts comes the action. What your mind is and what your heart is is your thoughts. And from that action it will develop habits. Thank you, Pastor. And from your habits will be your character. Please think about this. I'm at the end. I'm just showing a little part of what I've been working through, again, studying and reading. This is who we are. And Colossians chapter 3 says, verses 1 and 2, set your hearts and minds, fix them on Christ who's seated at the right hand of the Father. That's where our minds and our hearts need to be. Now, let me read from my notes. So a definition of discipline, this is a good one. It's the ability to do the right thing at the right time for the right reason. I'm going to read it again. The ability to do the right thing at the right time for the right reason. And our problem is, Disordered desires or love. Desire is not a bad word. It just depends on if they're good desires or bad desires. Desire is a good word. But what do you desire? Every single one of us. This speaks to me, folks. And I'm trying to share what I feel God wants me to share with you today. Well, let me read. I'm going to be through in a minute. Most people fail in the art of living, not because they're really bad or without will, but they can't lead a better life. Because they fail because they don't wake up and see when they stand at a fork in the road and have to decide. That's the decision that's coming here, from the mind, the thought, into the action, which becomes a habit, which becomes a character. So you stand at the fork in the road most minutes of the day in your thought life, in your decisions you make, how you use your time, how you use your money, honest, what you read, what you watch. Yeah, folks, really. Dallas Willard to say the major goal of Hollywood is sex and uh, violence. And I said to myself, he's right. And you're watching because you want the sex and the violence. And I said, gulp, he's right. I'm just telling you the truth. Set your heart and your mind. There's 177 movies on the, on the flight. I come over on Delta from Frankfurt, Germany to Detroit, Michigan. 177 films. I think maybe one was worth watching. You know. Do I like action movies? Yeah, I do. My wife says, how can you watch that stuff? You're sitting next to me. John, what are you doing? When Dallas Willard, and I read that in the renovation of the heart. Hello. That's the title of a book. <laughs> I said, ah, oh, that's coming through. I'm a missionary. Next time I got on an airplane where I am often, I went to the Builder Show or the Food Channel. It's not sex or violence. 
I got my Kindle along with 100 books on it. I can pray for the Aldizi widows in Kirkirk, Iraq. And we've personally sent thousands of dollars there. Not your work money, not our missionary account money, the money that we're stewards of. I am putting my money in the bank of heaven. Because I'm in my 80s, and I'm going to be there really soon. That's just a fact. And it might take you a little longer, but you're headed for one or two destinations, and God in his love gives you the option. Okay, we're uh, 1132. So, they fail because they don't wake up and when they see, when they stand at a fork in the road and have to decide. It's our daily, seemingly insignificant decisions that eventually shape or sculpt our characters and harden them into stone or free them to flourish. So it's a process, a living sacrifice. It's every day making the right little decisions and never losing sight of the goal. Last two sentences. What starts as an act of the will eventually turns into our inner nature. What becomes, begins with a choice, brothers and sisters, becomes a character. What begins with a choice eventually becomes our character. And with each passing year of apprenticeship to Jesus, our mind is further and further from hell and closer to the place where God's will is done. And this is the power of our choices, decisions, and habits for good or for evil. We make our decisions, and then our decisions make us. In the beginning, we have a choice, and eventually, we have a character. Let's stand. I just pray to God that you can remember some portion of what's been shared today. To be like him. To try to repay the debt. We owe and we can't repay. It's a song. We can't repay this debt. But we can try by being a living sacrifice. Living sacrifice sounds painful to me. I read better a dead sac a living sacrifice, says the Bible. And I, I, I know I say I say the same. Every time I come here, I sort of talk the same. I know that. But I'm just trying to be a pilgrim on the journey like you. Before Dallas Willard goes to bed every night, he says in Renovation of the Heart, I either pray the Lord's Prayer or I quote the 23rd Psalm. I want you to get in circles. You don't have to hold hands. You can do what you want. Would you please get in circles, and I want you to quote either one of them. And then if you have the courage and the love, pray for one another that you'll have the strength to do the right thing. Would you do that? And then we're, we're, we're dismissed. And I pray to God you don't forget what's taken place but is, is bonded into you. I want you to quote the Lord's Prayer together or the 23rd Psalm. And then somebody pray. You know who I'd like to pray? Somebody who's never prayed out loud before. That's what I'd like. Go ahead. Your family. 23rd Psalm, 